John McCullough. Queenie. <laughs> I'm, I'm Melanie Keene. I'm on planning commission and I live here in Pennington. Woohoo! Yay. Uh, Gary Root, and I live in East Gallus. Yeah, and I'm in East Gallus too, so. East Gospel Hollow. Oh, and we have one absent member, otherwise Ron Yeah, Ron Shaw, Shaw is not going to be here. He's also on planning. Um, and he's across almost from the area, I mean, up, up and down the way. So. so if each of you could just introduce yourselves, tell us what your concern is. We're going to take notes. And then we'll just do a brief thing and then open it up. Denise? Oh, you want me to start? Oh, Denise Wheeler. I'm the chair of the select board, and I'm here to learn. I'm Allison Underhill. I live in downtown Avian, although technically in East Montpelier. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm going to write downtown. And I'm just concerned about um, what possibilities might be up there. I'm Barbara Whedon, and I live further up Avenue Road from the store. And I've always been concerned about keeping the village of Adamant, or whatever you, what you want to call it, <clears throat> a very uh, vital small community center, which includes residential possibilities. Uh, Robbie Porter, I live up on Haggett Road. I um, guess I'm confused that the village minimum lot size Boundaries go so far up there. I had no idea of that, and I'm wondering why that is. What the justification for that is? Mm -hmm. That's that's one of the reasons why we're here. Mm -hmm. to discuss. Uh, Janet McLeod. I actually live in East Montpelier, but my studio is about the co-op, mm -hmm. and I'm in Adamant. Oh okay. And I sort of want to know what the road crew is up to, but that's maybe that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> we aren't road crew. Sorry. <laughs> Ken Trask, I live in East Montpelier also, but I happen to be the, one of the vice president of the Avenue Co-op, so I'm just here to find out how that may impact the co-op. Okay. Karen King, I live in East Montpelier, and I'm here to learn. Right. Thank you for the email. Thank you. I'm Chris Andresen, and I live right over there. Right. Yeah, across the road. So, and um, mm -hmm. I'm kind of wondering about potential changes and what that would do to the mm -hmm. I'm Bill Porter and we live on the uh, Adam Road at the top of the hill mm -hmm. and our land borders uh, all this land. We live in the West Quarter. Okay. Yeah, Sam, Ruth Quarter. Sam. And I'm Molly Quarter, I'm the daughter and I own a lot of this land along the other side of this. And I'm wondering why the village is going to extend that way. I'm concerned about development on that whole side. Hang on a minute. I'm going to type that one now down. Okay. Larry? Um, I'm Larry Bush. I live on Bliss Pond Road. I'm on the Conservation Commission and the Lakes and Streams Committee. And I'm here to see what the Planning Commission is proposing and what you guys think about it. <laughs> and also to get some of Gary's cookies, I guess. <laughs> And help yourself at any point to the goodies that are over there. Um, what we thought we'd do is just start out with adamant as it is today, without what the planning commission is proposing. Um, Did we get Gary? Pardon? Did we get Gary? Yeah. 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 Planning commission uh, introduced him. That's another thing. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what we have today in this green hatch, in which everybody seems to have questions about is that is the actual village district for adamant and this is what it's been in our regulations since whenever we've had regulations with the village district which is before my time Gary can maybe address before it. Before my time. Oh okay. <laughs> so um, and this little orange thing here is what is called the designated village center. And about um, in 2015, or I don't know when it was, we um, applied for three areas of the, of the town of Callis to be designated village centers with the state. And it, what makes it a designated village center is you have a post office, 
a store. Um, we have a church here. Uh, East Callis has the store. Maple Corner has the store and post office. So those were the three designated village centers. And what's important about that is if we have that designated village center, the state gives grants based on the designated village center. So if we want to have better walkways or better bikeways or anything to do with, with that kind of thing and we want to get grants, you use the designated village center to get the grant. The issue came about then in 2015, the state started with a Shoreland Protection Act. And before this time, Callis' shoreland regulation only affected lakes that were 20 acres or more. When the state enacted Shoreland Protection Act, they went with ponds and lakes that were 10 acres. So Adamant Pond is a 10-acre lake. And so it became... Uh, it, it, the State Protection, Shoreland Protection Act um, affected Adamant Pond. And that's what you see here in the green is the 250 foot um, <coughs> overlay. Um, and um, the brown around it is a 100 foot buffer. And that's what the state um, has as the Shoreland Protection Act. Now, the one thing about the state is they stop the shoreland protection at roads. So if there's a road, there's the, the, effectively there's no buffer or anything else. Um, so, and that's where John is pointing out where, where the road is uh, and where you are. So, um, what happened is uh, we have been working on planning for years now to change the current shoreland regulations for the town of Calus. And what we decided we wanted to do is make a shoreland overlay that pretty much copies what the state has so that there's conformity to the state shoreland protection act. Um, and we were gonna do two things that were gonna be a little more, a little different. One was we were not gonna stop at the road. If there was a road and the 250 foot mark went beyond, <coughs> we would expect best management vegetative practices to also be practiced on each side of the road. In other words, the shoreland protection would go beyond the road. The other difference with the state is the state has a 20% impervious surface mark. We were going to keep our impervious surface mark at 10%. So when we decided to look at developing a shoreland, callous shoreland protection or overlay. Uh, we invited some folks from conservation and lakes and streams. And one of the things that was stressed upon us was why do we have a village district so close to the edges of the lake? When the village district is made for density, it's, it's, it's got, as you can see in the Comparison, there's no minimum acreage in village. Um, and so we wanted to hear from you. What do you think about having a village district on the edges of the lake? Um, help me out, Gary and Melanie and John. What else did we want to know? Basically, I think we wanted to hear from you what you thought. I'd also be interested in hearing how people feel about our proposed shoreland overlay actually extending into the designated village along with its 100-foot managed buffer and uh, maximum clearing all occurring in the right in the designated village center. So you mean in this area here? The overlap. What do you proposed. think about this overlap here? Right. I have a question specifically about that overlap. Eric has been doing beautiful work on his gardens, certainly within that overlap. Is that verboten according to these rules? Um, yeah, actually, but but see, they're not rules yet. We, not for we us. Don't have well, but is it is it forbidden by the state rules? No, the state stops at the road. He's he's between the road and the pond. Yeah. Then actually, he's allowed to continue any any current use, but if there was new use that involved clearing, he'd have to get uh, permission from the state. 
So I don't know if he's been clearing, but he's been digging and build, building beautiful little gardens there. That would be not. If he's putting in new plants, then he probably doesn't have a problem because the state wants to see the, their 100 foot buffer mm -hmm. as tightly vegetated as possible. But technically, yeah, he should be having these things reviewed by the state. <laughs> Even if it's just to say, I'm doing this, and the state says it looks good. But yeah. Well, what's be. the process of reviewing by the state? Calling up the state bureaucracy, setting an appointment, have somebody come out, fill out forms, you got get it. approval? You got it. Yeah. Okay. But it, they're, they're, they're actually easier to deal with than you make it sound for, for state agencies, mostly because they're so overwhelmed that they can't spend a lot of okay. time on stuff. What, what about grandfathering for? prior existing. That, that's there. Okay. And both the state regs and our... our but, right. The, the state regs get into effect when you start something new. So what you what's grandfathered is grandfathered. But if you say, oh, I want to build a deck on a house or something on the other side, or I want to add a little bit of something, you're doing something new, then you've got to go to the state. And eventually, if Callis has the same uh, regulation, then you start out with our zoning administrator. So, so they'd have to do it twice. Exactly. You'd have to get a callus approval and you have to get a state That's approval. That's the way it is right now. Right. Yes. That's the way it is now. Except that the proposed uh, shoreland overlay would exempt things that are already permitted by the state. So if you get green light from the state, you don't need to go separately oh, okay. to the town. Well, other than to say, here's what I have. Yeah, not them. necessarily. No, it's still. Well, right now, the way because our our regs aren't consistent with the state, you got to go through DRB and the state review. But if we change it, then you would only have to go through the state. If we made them consistent, then then what happens if if they're consistent, the town can go to the state and we say, look what we did. We're mm -hmm. copying the state, and the state can delegate to the town the responsibility of taking care of permitting. And that, that was one of the goals here. Right. Was to try to for the applicant to try to make it just a one point of contact for right. permitting instead yeah. of going to two. So why is this why is the town now proposing different, you know, going beyond the roads and the other things that differ from the state regulations? Well, when we first were doing our shoreland, um, we had a couple folks on um, a couple of organizations really don't like the state stopping at the road. Um, mainly because if you look at Bliss Pond Road, um, there's a lot of, the, the road goes right next to the lake mm -hmm. and everything stops. But if, if the 20, 250 acre or the 250 foot buffer goes beyond, then we want to have that vegetative management on the other side of the road to control um, Storm water to control whatever else because it's from the road that goes into the lake that becomes the sediment and the phosphorus and the, the problem, as I understand it. So we thought we would be a little more stringent, if you want to call it that, and, and say that we are not going to stop at the road. We're going to try to have best management practices on where. So I understand that the phosphorus is a problem, and I don't want to minimize that, but. I guess my question is, when you essentially create two sets of right, two sets of regulations that are not the same, you complicate things for people a lot. Mm -hmm. And what you're talking about is those certain situations in which the state protected designation would be superseded or exceeded by the town's designation. Mm -hmm. That can't be a that can't be very much percentage of shoreline in the town, and it can't be very much phosphorus, and it. Certainly, it's going to be a pain in the ass for the people. For instance, people living along this pond road, whose all of whose property will then have to be, they'll have to go to the state or the town. Apparently, they'll have to go to both if they want to do anything on. I mean, there are, I don't know how many houses within 250 feet of the shoreline of Bliss Pond. For instance. Bliss Pond is currently in our shoreline protection um, district right now, our shoreline district, and that has an 800 foot uh, boundary. And it also has, it has a 50 foot buffer. vegetated buffer, but it's a 150 foot sort of no build zone. For 150 feet, there really aren't, isn't much that the, the only, the only limit past 150 feet is minimum lot size is three acres. So can and I? That, that's current zoning right now. Can I paraphrase what I think I heard your concern to be? 
Robbie, is that uh, basically you might prefer to have us mimic, be, equi equi be the same as the state and not stop at the road. I mean, and stop at the road and not go beyond the road to yeah. keep it consistent. Well, I think there's a huge value in keeping things simple, okay. especially when the costs of not keeping them simple are, seem mm -hmm. kind of high for them. <coughs> Do you have any uh, idea <coughs> about the rationale of the state in making that decision not to go beyond the road? It probably had a lot to do with camps around Lake Champlain. Mm -hmm. uh, we're Lake Champlain and some of the <coughs> and some of the that, that kind of shoreland area. That probably had a lot to do with the, the language they came up with. The people at the sea were very uh, were very um, willing to to say, "Listen, this is this is not necessarily an ecological solution. This is a political solution." And um, it isn't what we wanted, but it, it's what we uh, thought that we could get. Um, I think the, the, mm -hmm. to, to specifically answer your question as to why we are promoting that, uh, that different boundary, it's because we had a meeting just like this, and the case was very persuasively made to, um, to follow the, these guidelines, and we listened to what was said, and and it made sense to us. And so we modified the proposal based on that. Um, so I, I, I do encourage you to feel uh, optimistic about all of this because it means that we're actually listening. <laughs> I personally think that it's very, very important for, for us as a town to exceed that other side of the road because this is environmentally. Mm -hmm. okay. um, it's not the right thing to do. Um, I just wanted to say that the uh, Conservation Commission and the Lakes and Streams Committee, both organizations, uh, very strongly supported extending it beyond the road um, so that you could, could achieve the benefits uh, of protecting those bodies of water. Um, I live on Bliss Pond, but I, I'm not, my property is not separated by the road, so I guess I don't have the same dog in the fight that the other folks do, but I very, very much hope that we can extend that so that uh, future development uh, and hopefully current development if the owners are willing to, to do it would, um, would create better buffers to protect this pond because uh, it gets an awful lot of um, sediment um, just from the road itself which can't be helped at this point. So the buffer, you're talking about vegetation, there's no building in that area anyway, no, right? Not, not so that just, just has nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. Nobody's ever going to build there. But you're talking about encouraging people to plant certain kinds of things that help prevent right. Keeps the water, water habitat. Mm -hmm. uh, We've got plenty of existing structures within that 100 foot buffer. Mm -hmm. And if a person wants to modify their uh, a structure within that buffer, the state might tell them their mitigation strategies, do more vegetative buffer plantings, um, maybe put in a rain garden, do something to control surface water runoff. So And within within the buffer, <coughs> pretty much, you know, the co op is part of that. I mean it's all kind of within that uh, that structure, but it you're a non your grandfathered is a non conforming um, building and so you know it's, it's going to stay that way unless you decide you're going to do something or build something then then it's got to go to the zoning administrator and then to the state if, if you're within that 250 foot if there's any building within that 250 foot looks like the co-op's out the co-op's not the in it but the next the property is. next property is that little corner it's here <clears throat> Co-ops. Sorry, I'm having mouse problems here. Sorry oh, about that. The co-ops. There's the co-op right here. Yeah, there's the co-op there. there. So it's no, there. This parcel here has part of the 250 foot. Yeah. So right now, yeah, I think it's bare piano. Um, a portion of that parcel, you actually have to go to the state and ask permission for, for work in this purple area here on this lot. 
There should be two lots between the co-op lot and the. Um, mm. There's Mary and Pruka's <coughs> house, right. and then there's and then there's what's part of the music school. Land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Correct. In fact, there should be probably three parcels really? in what used to be the Chase yeah. house. Right. And then the well, I saw part out. of that. I saw part of the bear <laughs> I mean, there are. Okay. There. Well, the Mary and Pruka's house is, or I don't, who, who, I don't know who Jenny. owns it. Jenny. 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 Oh, Jenny. Owns Jenny. Jenny owns yeah. It does, right. So that's a, that's a privately owned parcel behind the music school, behind the co-op parcel. Where's the co-op on there, John? There's the one right here. The crossroads? Right there. Right in the crossroads. <clears throat> so the dam, the music school, the dam, and all that is part of the, mm -hmm. in the purple. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And the pools, the, the pools that come across the road, the what? The, the pool no, along the, oh, the pool along. Oh. It doesn't show on this, but I'm assuming it's in line with this mm -hmm. little Street. river. So yeah. a portion of that may actually be inside the state shoreline protection act. Well, not the state, but our proposed callus. Yeah. yeah. wouldn't the state. The state doesn't go across the road. Oh, one of the pools is actually uh, on the on the pond side of the road, so. That would be. <coughs> that would apply. So you, you mean the one between the Beaver Dam and the and the right. and the stone? Oh, oh, the, the, the way it looks right now, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so the question that oh, oh, is there, are there any more questions about the uh, shoreland? I have one one question about that. The shoreland of that. Um, what we always used to call the beaver pond, I guess you call it Adamant Pond. That's a, been a quite variable and evolving shoreline over the years. How does this, uh, how do, and, and the beavers affect that, and I think just natural filling in. So how, does, how do these state regulations deal with that, or how do the town regulations deal with that? Yeah, um, not much. I looked today, it said the mean water level. Yeah. So that must be like the average water level of it, right? Like where is open water, mm -hmm. is that right? Whatever the mean water level is, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> the state can tell you where that is. And actually, that's how the roads are, are shoreland. It is defined by the mean water level. But it changes every year. Yeah, it does. But we can't change our so, own. So you have nothing to do with the, like that dam, which is broken right now. No. So, so really, the state if we were concerned, which we are, we should go to the state and say, since you made us do this, now you're going to fix it, right? Is that, the, I don't know who the owns the dam. The dam is the state, or I think it's the, the music school the people. The music school, the music school people own that dam, because I remember when it broke. Right. Being down here. Okay. With Eric, the water flowing down the road. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, Eric thought it was the state, so, okay. Do you think the dam is broken now? Yeah, it is. Well, that's what he leaks. Yeah, it leaks. But yeah. I think it's they always all leaked. It just has so little water that it hasn't. Yeah, the flow is yeah. so low. Eric says something about those tubes have shifted. So now we put. Oh, so you're talking about the beaver, the beaver pond. The beaver yeah, baffles, the beaver right? The beaver baffles oh, have helped with the situation there. This year, mm -hmm. the water level is really low. Right. But other years, and in the springtime and stuff like that, the beaver baffles really do. Oh, they did. It was to really help. I think the beavers yeah. have abandoned that dam anyway and is deteriorating. The beaver baffles are not, not in the same mm -hmm. position that they were right, in originally. The, original. mm -hmm. the state will come out and look at those every little while. Check them out. Okay. Any other questions on the shoreland portion of this? That either what we're proposing or what the state has? Because it, more before we go into the whole village district discussion. So Jan, any of these changes would affect? Pardon? Any changes in the, that are made would affect the whole town, not just Adamant. No, exactly. we're not Adamant. I mean, it, 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 well, this portion affects Adamant. Right. But there's other issues at Maple, at, at Curtis Pond. There's issues right. at North Curtis. I mean, we, we have, we're a very wet, Town. Yes, we are. <laughs> and, um, uh, and so this is probably the first time that we're going out to, to the areas and you know, trying to establish the dialogue before we put our final thing mm -hmm. out to do our final hearing. 
which we have to do two final hearings, one by the planning, one by the select board, before it can go and be voted on by the people. So we're really still along in this process. I, mean, I have no clue when we're going to be ready to vote on this, but we're still working through it, and the important thing is to hear from the people that live and are affected by this. I'd like to point out that we did modify what you see in purple there, the 250 foot boundary for our callus overlay. We can't do anything about the state's jurisdiction, but the callus overlay, we extended at 800 feet on the eastern shore of Curtis Pond because so many people told us that there were special problems there related to development on that oh. side of the, of the pond that we, uh, we increased the, the overlay district there which basically extended three, hour, three acre minimum lot size within to 800 feet from the water's edge mm -hmm. instead of 250 feet from the water's edge. Yeah, floor. I remember that. And, and here in Adamant, you might, and I'd like to hear someone talk about whether or not they want to see the, the overlay district expanded, or you could maybe accomplish the same thing by taking the village district and, and bringing it down so it doesn't wrap around the quarry theater at the top. It, it comes down closer to the to the and center make, of the village. And then make everything rural residential. Everything here would, would be rural residential. Which three would be a three-acre minimum lot. Where's so the quarry? Controlling, you'd be reducing your village district. And, and that's one of the questions we're asking. Mm -hmm. Should we reduce the village district? Because do you want density on your shoreland? That's basically what we're asking. And if you don't, what's the best way should we do that? Should we reduce the district, make it rural residential? And if you do reduce it, where do you want your village district to be? What, 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 what is the village district? Is that that little red thing? No, no, that's the green all hatch. All the green. All, the green. Yeah. all of that green yeah. hatch is village district. The way it stands now is the village district in Cows. Mm -hmm. Well, that changed. It doesn't seem as though the village, the, the green part represents the village at all. The, right. Most of the village is on the other side and not right. in the village district. And that's a very undeveloped and undevelopable right. along there. And you don't want it to because you don't want them developing right on the shore anyway. Right. And it, there's no sense in having So that what you're saying is that as things currently stand with no minimum lot size, someone, presumably the owners of the music school, could theoretically develop multiple multi-unit yes. housing along the edge of up that road there. There's no there's no restriction all, all on that. All in here, yes. All yes. that could be yes. the way things are right now. The yes. way things are now, yes. Yep. That answers your question. Right. That's that doesn't make sense. I, I'm all in favor yeah. of concentrating the development in the village and mm -hmm. maybe okay. extending okay. the village okay. minimum okay. lot area somewhere, but that doesn't okay. make any okay. sense to extend it there. Okay. Yeah, would that change the designation at all? It goes all the way up Quarry Road. Right. It looks so like it encompasses the end of the quarry. It, it so you're proposing cutting block them off the top part of it, making it smaller? Well, I, I mean, anybody who knows that land, it's essentially wet a, right. a, large, a lot of it, too. The only place it could really be developed would be all the way out at the end, which really makes no sense. Is it's a one <laughs> road. With, yeah. Those are recognized wetlands. Right. So, so what is that? What those are wetlands. Wet those lands. are recognized Those are state designated wetlands. <coughs> well, well, these are actually, I think it's the that means that there are uh, development constraints. Uh, what Matt Peters did, mm -hmm. that, that we accepted. So it's more than just the state. These are like right, okay. state okay. plus Matt So Peters. my question, Jan, was would this change the village center designation? We ha we're not talking about that yet. Okay. All we're talking about is this village district here. Yeah, the village, the designated mm -hmm. village center is just an economic growth area, right, right. and it, it's really not impacted one way or another. It's but it isn't even where there's the village, so. Right. Well, well, it is. Well, the designated, the designated village center is. It right, is. The, the, the rest of it isn't. The, no. The, the, the minimum lot. Can over. you put it on? The designated village center. So there done. really looks as though there's minimum, That's the designated yeah. minimum opportunities center. even to build or to, to create lots because of the way it is. Right. Yeah. And remember, the designated village center is more of a state designation 
to be used to get grants. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily, if, if you decide, or we decide, if, that we want to make, let's say you want to make um, this, maybe the village area, where you could do more concentrated uh, development with the water flowing down that way, and you make this all rural residential so that there's a three acre minimum lot, then, then we have to decide where do we want the village or do you want this rural residential and do you want to, planning commission, the, the Central Vermont planning recommends a village that goes a little bit, a village district that goes beyond the des designated village center, but I don't know how we do that. That's kind of beyond me. Why? Huh? Why are we supposed to do that? Um, they, I think they want to see the, the um, yeah, the Central Vermont Pl Regional Planning wants to see a little bit of area where the, you can do quote unquote economic growth. And I'm doing it in quotes. That's the planning, the Central Vermont Planning. That if you're going to have any ability to do a concentrated economic development, you're going to not you're going to do it a little bit beyond the designated village center. And they recommend a, a radius, but we we're kind of stuck because. We got East Montpelier on one side, and you know. Well, you've obviously got to have the ability for the village to go across to East Montpelier too, right? Because that's where the people are, right? And they're not up at the other end of the pond. Can right? you add East Montpelier's mm -hmm. zoning designations in no. this overlay? Because yeah, 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 yeah. we have no control over East Montpelier. But it would be interesting to see. I mean, that ultimately the shape of the village is going to be determined not only by Callis zoning, but also by East Montpelier zoning. So right. it, would, it would help you see what the whole village is. Right now you're just seeing half the village. Yeah. Right. The village, okay. the village commercial center, which is really the red, yeah. is a little different than the village zoning. Right. So think about it like, like I mean, not that Adam Ant would really have a commercial zone, but think about it as where you want your dense commercial uh, properties to be, business center to be, and then the dense housing around them. That's why you so, have a village designation for your zoning that's right. broader than the village center. So you're, you're saying, for instance, if someone wanted to open a, a, an additional business in, in uh, open to the public in Adam Ant Village, they would be essentially limited to that orange area. They would, no, they, no, they would be. No, they would be aided in doing that if they were in the orange set. But they would be able to do it in any of the green areas. Yeah. yeah. For sidewalks and streetlights. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But you want a dense housing possibility around that village center to and some that's, extent. That's the green. And that's the green. Yeah. And 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 it may be the, the right map here, or maybe wrong. But you do want dense housing around where you picture your commercial zone. Why would it reach way up there? Well, it might, might maybe we would decide that we sh it shouldn't. I mean, that's something for, for all of us to, to decide yeah. and what extent it goes to. But you do definitely want both a village zoning and a and a village commercial area. I mean, I guess since you're here, I'll, I'll my comment. Then I yes, I think you certainly ought to move that down way down Quarry Road yeah, closer to closer to Adamant. It doesn't make any it doesn't make mm -hmm. any sense there. Right. See where see where it comes out of Sodom Pond and then make does an arc yep. sort of heads towards the back half of Jerry Barton's. Yeah. That line just kept going right to the pond. Would that be like I think you should go up a little farther than that because it looks like that's potentially developable land there. It's outside of that wetland and I don't know I don't know who I, is that Rupert uh, Ruth Copper Kopransky's land. Yeah, I think something in there. So there's potential Possibly for somebody to put a house in there. I mean, that would be the logical place to have more development. And I think that's a hillside, actually. So I don't think it's right. probably the same difference. Yeah, there's a lot of hills. <laughs> <laughs> right. keep, keep, keep in mind uh, that the, the, that you want to have enough of a village zoning district that you incentivize growth there, rather than giving people incentives to develop far away from the village. So I would be why. Because you want to concentrate people to, to live near village. each other and to live in a dense area around the village center. Why do you want to grow growth? You, you, you may not, but to the extent that growth is going to happen, you want it to be concentrated around the village area and not dispersed. So the tighter you make the village area, the more likely you are to encourage people to build outside of it. So I would just say, you may want to adjust the lines. I would just say give a generous village zoning 
so that the that provides enough opportunity for development for people to concentrate it there if it is going to happen. Uh, can I just ask who you are? Uh, sorry, Lewis Porter. <laughs> Did you sign in too? Uh, no, I haven't yet. Oh, wow. I, I want to add something to what Lewis is saying, John. If you can pull that map down so we can see more of what's north of there. Yeah, I'll do my best. Like that. Yeah. So that area, that area that the, the, the uh, northern end of what's now designated as a as a, mm -hmm. a village area. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, that is essentially in what is one of the larger blocks of wild, undeveloped land in Calus. It's that section owned by the music school. My parents own some of it. It goes over, um, Fowler's own some of that. But it's essentially a, a chunk, if you can, I don't know if you can pull that down. It's crazy to, it would be crazy to push development into oh, that essentially right. wild yes. corridor. Right. Right. No, we wouldn't want to do that. I mean, you can see that's, that's a, it's a, it's one of the larger pieces, even if you go I don't know if you can drag that down. That's where that yeah. whole magical area is, right? Yeah, it's, well, it's, it's, a large, it's a large wilderness area, essentially. Yeah. It's owned by a variety of different landowners. But right. it, but John, be, can you point to where he's talking about? I, it's hard to... I'm talking about uh, this, all this area up in here. Oops. All this <laughs> wilderness up there. Yeah. You that's owned by a variety, of, a variety of landowners. Mm -hmm. But if you put concentrated development here, which you don't want. It, it would just be because, because bad for wildlife. The, wild the right. one thing that, that the charter has, the planning commission is chartered with, is adding to our town plan on forest integrity and the or, and the corridor. So that's going to, you know, we got to try to work all this together. So when we do that amendment to the town plan, if that village is gone, then we've got a better way of writing our forest integrity and 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 corridors. And so that's why this is all important in terms of getting it all. I think that district should stop where the gate is now. Yeah. Stop where the gate stop. is. Uh -huh. The quarry road. Mm -hmm. oh, that's it's way up there. That's, 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 that's way up there. That's about right there, isn't it? Yeah. I think it should stop. So, so, so you're locked so you're the truck. There's a quarry house and there's a log cabin up there, too. Eric and Donald do. Right. Well, all those cabins up there, too. The piano? There's the other piano. Well, the other ones. Way, way at the top there, there's that whole area where all the small buildings are, um, what it used to be. But those are potentially developable into full-fledged houses. So well, this exactly. Is so do we, yeah. yeah. no. do we want no. that? No, I don't think anybody wants that. I don't that. want it no. no. <clears throat> but I, I wouldn't but have ever thought are, that. But if they're already existing. Well, yeah, but, but it's yeah. controlled by non-conforming laws, mm -hmm. and it has to go to DRP. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah, so some of them are in, some of them are out. This road goes to some of them, and there's the other one. Mm -hmm. well, that's, that's the Quarry Theater. That's right. So the Quarry Theater is actually outside the village. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And, and those little and dots are These are the little piano houses. The buildings. Practice rooms. There's yeah. single room cabins. There's 20 of them. We had to go visit them. No, because Lydia wanted to go visit them. Yeah. 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 Not all of them. No, but all around. They weren't just for music. For music. It, was, it was for a different. First year a different thing that's going to happen. Cultural side. The whole cultural side, mm -hmm. yeah. Artists, artists. So what I'm hearing, uh, there seems to be somewhat of a consensus of moving a village district down. We yes. don't know exactly where, but <clears throat> and allowing for some concentrated growth area in and around the designated village center and down, but getting rid of that village district up there and converting that to rural residential. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Not not rural residential, but <clears throat> I'd like it to be a village with a single acre, or no no size specified. Right? Well, well, rural residential requires minimum of three, three acres. Right. 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 <clears throat> the other option is the um, village. No, village has no requirement. No requirement. Right. So you. That means anybody can build anything yes. anywhere. Is that we bring no yes. condos down there next to no. Actually, that's, that's no, been no, hanging no, over no, everybody's head no. for the last four well, years. No, so no, yeah. with, no, with no restrictions, they could do that. It's it's not like yes, it's not like that's something where that that might happen. That's that's the way things are right now. Right. Yeah. Right. So so the question. So you'd like to see a big development in there, Barbara? No, I would like to see small individual houses. More houses? Pardon? Yes, 
like the, when you're at the, the, the co-op store, uh -huh. and you go around the corner, there are those three nice houses next to each other, right. which, which two are now used by the music school. Mm -hmm. But wouldn't it be nice to have three families living in three houses and having that same kind of a cluster right, development in other places? But not three more houses in addition to that. In, in available place, in available places in, within this village district. But not, not, not on three, minimum three acres. Oh, oh right. I, I no, okay, Barbara, what you're saying is that if, if we keep, if we move the building to, oh, man. Okay. You need a pointer, Jim. I point know, and yeah, right, I, did, I, don't need, I need my cat line. thing. <laughs> yeah, if we, if we, if it's, there. let's oh. say we're here. Here's a pointer. That pointer. Here's a pointer. Jim. Barbara, here's a pointer. Right, oh, right, right, right. oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, okay, so let's say this is the village district here. This would allow you to do your concentrated. Right. Yes. Yeah. But up here yeah. is where yeah. we're yeah. saying then it becomes rural. We want this rural right. residential up here because we want that three acre minimum here. So we're trying to decide yes. okay. where okay. this goes. Or even more restricted since it is a a very wild area, and we we all right. seem to agree that we want to keep the big what areas else? wild. What else could it be, Jim? Well, so then this would go here. Could be a resource recreation, which is a 10 acre minimum lot size. And we do have that. Mm -hmm. um, with, with considerable other restrictions. Mm -hmm. so there's a significant limitation on what you can do with that lower yes. piece. Okay. Uh, but just above it. <laughs> I think too, John. There's a lot of steep slopes around there too. Yeah. Where you know, that are going to be controlling things. Okay. All right. So are other folks thinking the same thing? That it seems like it. Yeah. And it's not that we can build more buildings, but just use the existing buildings. I thought you were saying you wanted to have more buildings. I do want to have more buildings. But in a more I, want, I want the opportunity to have more But in a more concentrated small, area. In a, more building in a concentrated area. Which is what the state is really yes. building. But there is an issue to that. And I'll tell you what the issue is that we've been told in, in, in planning, and that is when you start doing concentrated building, do you need a water system, or are you going to allow everybody having their own wells? And do you need, need a waste water system? And I tell you right now, that I don't want to be part of having a waste water system because I look at what's happening in Plainfield and the millions of dollars they're spending. Um, and so when we talk about development, we don't have a good infrastructure for it. We don't have the ability to have the, the, the East Callis has the East um, Callis Fire District. They're limited. We can't grow there because they're stuck at 53 users. And unless they change or we develop a whole new water system there, we East Callis is not going to grow. Another thing that's going to be a development problem, no matter how big your lots are in this area, is your on-site wastewater system. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Which has to get stepped the soil, the state. The soils and groundwater around here are terrible. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, well let's, let's look at it this way, is that it, it could be difficult. There may be very, very few options for it, but why limit the possibility of development, more clustered development, smaller lots, where it is possible? Because you don't have to live next to it. Right. I do. But there's nothing in this. You don't, there's want, no, you don't want another neighbor? No. There's nothing in this that would limit it. It would, it would, take, it would take away an area, that, that area that sticks up. It would take that area out of it. Yeah. But the, the unlimited, minimum, no minimum lot size, encourage the yeah. concentrated development in the, in the village area, that would still be it entirely possibly. intact. Uh, just just only in this area where it makes sense, not yes. in the upper. I don't know if there's any, I mean, <coughs> I, yeah, there should be a way to encourage it even more in the village than there is, but yeah, it's a hurdle between water and septic, septic and, and right. existing lots, mm. and yeah. What's the zoning for the white uh, that's outside? <coughs> that's rural residential. And that's how many acres? Three. Three. And 
300 feet of road front. And we, we mm -hmm. provided a comparison to the difference between village and rural residential. Mm -hmm. right, right now, the, uh, the practical uh, lot size that uh, that we find is developable in the village district, which doesn't have, by regulation, doesn't, doesn't, it's not controlled by lot size, but it is controlled by siting, uh, septic, and water. And if you have both septic and water on the same lot, it's pretty tough to get a lot smaller than three quarters of an acre. It's, um, in most cases, it, it essentially works out to about one acre lot sizes that, become the, the uh, effective minimum lot size because that's what you need in order to, in order to site your uh, facilities on it. If you have a water system, you can, you can get that down to probably half of that, which is, you know, which is a pretty, pretty plump lot for uh, places like Barry City, but it's a pretty small lot for places like uh, Lightning Ridge Road, so um, you know it's it does strike a, a, a an effective balance that that is the uh, it is essentially the character that you're looking at right now in uh, traditional development within the villages in Callis. That's what we're that's what we're seeing. Even in North Callis, where there are lots of very very small lots, those lots are not being populated um, just because they can't. They can't do with them what one needs to be able to do in order to put a house on it. So the way things are right now, so I bought Greg's place and kind of have that big lawn between the house and the church. I could conceivably subdivide that and put a couple of houses in there. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Except for the wetlands problem. Well, there's no wetlands indicated on that map. No. No, yeah, it looks pretty, pretty good, actually. Well, yeah. well, I know. I know, I know it's wet. I, I absolutely know that it's wet. I, I understand that. But, it, but yeah. at least on there, it's not indicated that it's a wetland. Right. Mm. Which is interesting because Donna's, you know, her, her business is located in a wetland. Right. Um, you know, I'm looking where you know, Eric and Donna's house kind of surrounded. Mm -hmm. But anyways, but yeah, I could conceive, but not that I want to. Yes. Yeah. Conceivably, yes. Okay. <laughs> anything along there as well. But, um, question? I have a weird question. Go ahead. That line that goes so straight across uh, Martin Road. Yeah. Where, the, on the left hand side. That diagonal line right on the left. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it just, it's so straight. Is that just a, pro is it a property line? I think that is a property line. I, I think it might be a property line too. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's just stone wall in the, it's in the in field. It's in between the, my two parcels. Okay. So that's why that was made that way, to because it was a property line. We don't know. When, I mean, when zoning, was, know. Just, when, when zoning yeah. was initially um, uh, proposed and passed in Calus, no, uh, property not lines a, were one of the primary It's not a uh, property line. It's not a property line. It's, no. 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 It's not a predatory line. Hmm. Well, there's lots of things wrong with that map. There's a brook there that doesn't exist. You know. Maybe an intermittent. No, it's not. I just like that. That's the brook out of your pond. I know, but it doesn't go that way. Right. But that's what they, that's where they. I think they just guessed. <laughs> yep. <laughs> they thought it must go that way, but it doesn't. Yeah, you're right, Louis. That goes right back to your house, that three, the minimum. Because that uh, must be the corner. No, it's, it's farther than that. That must be the corner right Wait, at the bottom of your house. That's, the, that's the corner of the field. Carl's upper. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. But not the, the zoning goes, that, that, that where the three, where the minimum, or the, the village it, district yes, goes. It's basically at the, at the beginning of the hill. Beginning of the hill, right yeah. behind your house. Yeah. Essentially. I mean, yeah. you are you said it correctly when you said that it's hard to know what the forces were that were brought to bear right. when they proposed zoning. Basically, anybody who had who had a suggestion to make could come in, unless anybody had an objection to that suggestion. They they said, sure, why not? And, um, 
you know, so that initially there was a lot of that, and then as time has gone on, there's been less and less and less. I mean, I don't know about the diagonal line, but the general area makes sense because you want your dense zoning along the roads near the village center. You're, you're tell us, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have a little bit East Montpelier. Yeah, and then it gets over because you're, you're East Montpelier, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, the problem, if you look at this map, the only really developable land in um, close to the village of Adamant is, is those fields that uh, Joyce the Mountain and, yeah. and Sherry Gallus, and the, the, those are the only dry, right. elevated spots. I don't know what how East Montpelier has that zone, I don't, but I don't think East Montpelier has a village district that covers that area. And then there's the town okay. forest sticking into that. Right, right. exactly. Um, so it's really, Adamant's really it's hemmed in. Damp too. Right. Right, East Montpelier's got their uh, new village master plan, but mm -hmm. it's more in the, off of Highway 2. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure they have any village designation for Adamant in their, in their East Montpelier. Yeah, they don't have the resources to do it. Yeah. We don't? Because Montpelier is a village. Yeah. 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 Can you put the uh, parcel <laughs> lines over this, or? Can you put the parcels on, John? So the parcels are on, they're just being out. Uh, they're kind of faint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So where is East Montpelier, John? Uh, that's the town line right, right there. Right there. Yeah. Do, do you? from the town line. You? Yeah. Do the zoning uh, boards of the different, I mean, <laughs> there's, a, there's a village designation here that's arbitrarily cut in half. Do you, does the zoning board of, e of Calus and East Montpelier talk to each other about Coordinating. We have not. We have not. <laughs> I've been it's sitting here yeah. thinking maybe we need a meeting with East well, Montpelier. I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to ask Jean Gisser about that because I think she's on the zoning committee. It's, I mean, what would be beyond that orange polygon in East Montpelier? I'm just trying to think of the land. Allison's house. Is my house. house. Nothing. All right. Nothing. That would be village. I mean, like Donna's business? Yes. The orange She's in the house. She's in the house. She's in the house. She's in the house. So yes. by businesses, church, or cultural resource. And I'm not all aware of any cultural resource south of, of where the red blob is right now. Well, Rockwell's right. house so and part of the Allison's house. These are yeah. commercial. But commercial. Well, they're not commercial. Yeah. 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 A business, or church, or a store, okay. something like that. So the yeah. designation is probably fine, but in terms of where the village is, if we want to make a judge, right. yeah, yeah. 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 if we can change, that's what we could work on changing. With input from these folks. Yeah, yeah, John's John is business isn't it in the red. She's Where is it? I'm well, that's good. It maps. <laughs> <laughs> if it's not, I think it's no, not. no, it stops. It looks it's right to this. It stops at Center Road. Is Donna's on the other right. side of. Uh, center and Avenue. Donna's business is in that little oh, section that's not yeah. wetlands and not red. Yeah, yeah, okay, little, little piece right there. Right, right, right in there. there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That uh, tiny little piece right down there? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And then down who down If, if, she, if, she, if there's a business there, there, then actually yeah. maybe the designated village center map should be redrawn. Mm -hmm. That would be something. Yeah, we go in for a renewal, we might want to expand that. Yeah. Yeah, because that's a business. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What would, that, what would that do for Donna? It would let her take advantage of some grant get opportunities. All the grants. <laughs> we, could, we could build a sidewalk. Sidewalk. Get <laughs> <laughs> a street light again. Yeah. 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 That was to include yeah. Donna's business. Yeah. 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 They could build a bicycle right parking area. Right. Yeah, but if, if we were to change the designated the village park. center, then it would be from the standing from the wall to the village which is the near that yeah, great. Yeah. How about the old post office building? What, hmm. Which side of that? Is that in Calus or East Montpelier? <laughs> That's Calus. Uh, that, the, Calus. What is, who, is that some, it's a music school building now. School. I don't know what it's called. The white one across the across from uh, Donna's. Right. Yeah, that's, oh, that's, that's in the red. red. No, no, not the big one. Oh. That's in That's in Calus. Right. And that's in, in the red. Yeah. The, the I think it's part of the red. Designated yeah, building, I think. So. Well, yeah, I'm not sure right there, across the street. not there because it's right across the street, so I just I don't think it comes down quite far enough to uh, include that. Just that little piece of green in there. Just between the so wetland and the I, I mean, right. other yeah, than um, hearing to bring the village district down, 
more towards the end of the pond, make that rural residential. And I think in three years, we have to renew our designated village center. We can make a change at that point to the designated village center. Um, but there's also the idea of having a resource recreation district as part of? I don't know. I mean, we could, but resource recreation is. Uh, and we're also looking at forest integrity, so maybe that's like a next phase. And right now we're just doing shoreland, and then this village district size issue popped up, and we wanted to see what people thought. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, that can definitely go on the to do list, just well, to look at what to do with the large, unfragmented. For the uh, increased use and increased activity at the community club. Right. There's the current resource too. recreation. What, what, what would that do that for your um, designated village center? It's not really commercial, but. That's like a civic. It's, it's a community public, building. It's, it's, a, it's a public building. It's, it's, a, a, yeah. it's, it's a, sort of the re it's it's same thing at. in Maple Corner. They have the Maple Corner Community Center across mm -hmm. from the store. Right. And so that's their designated village center. Yeah. So, so this, I mean, it could very well. Yeah. Yeah. So is this part of that little red? I don't know. No, no, no not I don't think so. No. No. Martin no. Road goes. Where is it? It's that little square. It's a little square out Martin Road there. Uh, yeah. Where, John? If you go out Martin Road there, about halfway to where the village is. Oh, yeah, the right, right, right there. That little right square. Right that's, yeah. the that's, that's the center. That's the community. That's this one here. That's this. So you'd have, yeah, so that would be a so extend the red out to that, perhaps. I, I think I remember when they were considering this, um, the proposal was that the designated village center would extend and wrap around it, and uh, mm -hmm. some from our regional planning said it, uh, it couldn't happen. Oh, why? why? Yes, because of the distance. There's, there's oh, also yeah. a proximity. They uh, want it concentrated. And and the quarry couldn't be part of it either. Oh. Hmm. Well, it's not well the quarry's way, way, way yeah. I remember it was a request because um, it would help with grant writing yeah. for the yeah. this. And this uh, was a school at one point, too. Yeah. So. I recall it came up, and this is what we ended up with, this, what the okay. state ended up giving us. What's that red line? Oh, I have some of the property. Hmm. That's too bad because it'd be yeah, nice John on the had to write up the designated village center. So, for here, so the so the orange the and the red are the village district designated village. Well, 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 this darker thing here, this is an overlap of our shoreland okay. overlay. Okay. Over uh, and there's a little overlay it on the designated village. The two things are like they they don't really mix well. No, and there's a little wetland there. And there's a well that's that's the ornamental ponds and all that. Oh, okay. Which does make an argument for not extending the shoreland protection over the road in this particular case. <laughs> because of the density. Yes, yeah, constructed. Right, right. because you're you're basically you're basically, you're basically encouraging you're basically encouraging commercial development and discouraging it through competing mm -hmm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think I think that would be a, a valid thing to open for discussion, that exact that exact question. Mm -hmm. uh, if other people have uh, an, an opinion on that that they could voice right now so that we could hear it and report it, and that would be great. What is there now in the red part that overlaps the shoreland? What is there for buildings and stuff? The main buildings for the music school. But nothing else. No. So where's, why where's pull the, out a village where's center? center? Where's the church? Church is in there. Across the street. Well, we're not we're not talking just right there. We're not just yeah. we're not discussing the designated village center. We're discussing um, the, whether the shoreland protection act should extend across the road yeah. in that one spot. Mm -hmm. um, not this is not a palace wide discussion. This is specific to that to this mm -hmm. one small area. Yeah. Uh, whether we're going to allow the road to be a barrier to uh, the uh, uh, restrictions of of uh, state shoreland protection, or whether we're going to extend it across the road to the full 200, 100 foot buffer and 250 foot, 100 foot no build and 250 foot buffer. Just in the specific right. Just in that right. one spot. Right. Oh, right. right. Yeah, it's crazy to have it do it in this. I mean, you have to, you have to, you have to, you have to in your mind's eye, you have to view where the road is mm -hmm. uh, right. right now and whether we are better served by the map the way it's drawn here 
or whether we are better served by uh, getting rid of the purple portion of the orange overlay that you see. I'm in favor of getting rid of it. Put me down for in favor of getting rid of it. Yeah. It, it seems to support smart growth. I'm curious you want about conservation. Well, I, you want it to stop at the road. I want the road, it to stop at the road in that section okay. right there. But, but why? Why? Yeah. Uh, well, for several reasons, I guess. First of all, the reason that Lewis cited, it's crazy to have regulations that are contradicting each other. Also, because I think the, there's no... There's nothing that's going to happen in that area that hasn't already essentially happened that's going to make a difference on, I mean, it's already lawns and, and fairly well developed there. So what, mm -hmm. what is the could, point? Could, could it be further developed yeah. there? I think if it were further developed, that would fall under some sort of, I mean, I, I think what we have right now is the restriction where technically Eric's flower gardens, where he dug and put in posts and perimeter fences around his gardens mm -hmm. would probably not allowed by the by the regulation that's there and that mm -hmm. because it's somebody's yard i mean a guy essentially was doing yard work in his yard and that's disallowed by by these confusing regulations i don't see well, any i don't I see any it's gain disallowed but he should check with the state he'd be on the other side of the road right on the pond side of the road so no he's, be he's between the pond and the road right so right. what well, we're, we're talking, talking about now about is carving out what's right. across the road Fair, true, true point and, and Denise, the way I look at it is we've told the state, this is where we want to build. This is our tight traditional business center, mm -hmm. such as it is in Adamant. We want to encourage growth and focus it here. And then as planning commission, we're saying, but we want to protect water quality and do right. these wonderful okay. things with Shoreland and go even above and beyond the state and cross right. the road. Okay, so okay. I just want to make now, sure I'm hearing what I'm thinking Now hearing. we're kind of, it's been pointed out, that's a little inconsistent to say build here, oh wait, no, don't build here. I mean, here. technically, so you, it's a decision point. You couldn't cut a shrub in the in the church yard without talking to the state because you'd be violating the shoreland prohibition against cutting vegetation uh -huh. within the 250 foot boundary. Right. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Right, right. so when they did landscaping around the church. Every time they did landscaping, they'd have to go to the state and maybe also the town and get permission to uh, right. cut or plant shrubs. That doesn't make any uh, sense. Continued right. uses are allowed to continue, but, but if someone did propose doing something that was a radical change from an established pattern, yeah, they'd have to. If they wanted to put a new steeple on the church. Well, that's what I'm wondering. What, what else could be? What other opportunity is there to house build back there? Well, well that's, that's there really the question. Is, is there an opportunity to build. build a house back there? And that well, it's, it's all wet. Area? I don't think it would perk, but, um, but the land is there. Well, I think right now, if you wanted to build a house there, you would have one part of the regulation saying we're encouraging development in this area, and another part of the regulation saying we're not allowing you to do anything. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I think the way it would actually work is you'd have to go to the state and say, we want to develop this piece of land because the town wants it built in the village. Yeah. So, John, the green, the green that is around is our 250 mark. This is it. This is a good spot. But that's for stops at the road. But where, what, what Callis is proposing goes up beyond that, right? Yeah, it went, went way down here. We go way down there is what Callis is proposing. Right, and this is what the so state is. So we're hearing that there's some concern they would almost rather we keep it on the state in this area. It's still have something one like this. area that's inconsistent because the state covers that one Yeah, there's place. still that weirdness there. Yeah, yeah. For sure. For the most part. Yep. You're, you're, I mean, you're definitely going to have some places where shoreland protection crosses into a village and even downtown centers, no doubt. I'm just wondering if we want to minimize that in this one area, and I, I don't have a strong feeling one way or the other. But. Well, the easiest way to write it up would be to have the, the boundaries of our proposed shoreland or shrod stop at the at uh, Haggard Road. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, could I ask? Um, you know, that there are similar, roughly similar issues um, in Maple Corner with Curtis Pond. Mm -hmm. Bigger issues, really, because there's more houses and more people in them. And the, the perspective, I think, of the lakes and streams people and the conservation people probably is that to the maximum extent possible, uh, in order to protect these waterways, which all interconnect and there's a lot of um, emphasis now on, on doing that, then um, it probably should get a nod over the the uh, village district standards uh, where possible. I recognize a lot of people wouldn't agree with that for lots of good reasons, but, but I think that would be 
I'm speaking for a lot of people I'm not authorized to speak for, but I think <laughs> they would probably tend to, to, to um, urge that you keep the 200, that you, that you cross the road and keep the 200 uh, foot. Well, yeah, well, that's why I'm asking what you could possibly do in that area, because that's what I'm right. thinking. Well, I mean, as was pointed out, there's stuff there already. And what's there already can continue as it is, unless there's any a, a change big enough that would trigger the regulations. But what it prevents is, is um, further development in that 250 feet, uh, even across the road, if, if you choose to extend it across the road. So you could have more or less what's there now, but you wouldn't have um, uh, further development um, in, that in that 250 in that 250 feet. Right. Well, that's, yeah, that's kind of my question, is what else could be built there? You know, is there is it housing or businesses or, you but know, be, what? And I mean, if you're in the village district, you can, you if, if based on what's permitted and what goes to conditional use, I mean, mm -hmm. it could be anything. Mm -hmm. Heck, in village district, they allow a vet clinic, for goodness sake, in the village district. Mm -hmm. um, we need yeah. one of those in Calais. Huh? We do, actually. Well, yeah, yeah. But not maybe in the village district, I don't know. Uh, but this is Curtis Pond, and this is the solution that we've made for Curtis Pond is on the, on the east shore, you need your cane along in. there, we made that an 800-foot uh, overlay, um, <coughs> meaning that, that the uh, vegetative management practices extend to the 800-foot mark okay. in order to protect, because Curtis Pond has a lot of um, water quality issues. Yeah. And what's the green? The green is the village district for uh, Maple Corner. Corner. But what we okay. and the little orange thing is the maple corner. Yeah, yeah. 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 And why didn't the 800 feet extend to the left side of the thing? Pardon? Well, why? it does now. This it this is our proposed. Side. If you saw mm -hmm. the existing, it does go 800 feet mm -hmm. on the other side. Mm -hmm. There's no road on that side, is there? There's no road, and steep slopes would prevent mm -hmm. any yeah, development. Yeah, there's only there. one property owner. And that's a resource recreation up there. Right, mm -hmm. right, the, yeah, okay. right. But that's crazy because there's, it's solid caps all the way along there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, yeah. right on all, top of the rock. They're all conditional, they're all non conforming. Mm -hmm. that, that was the thing that we found is 60% of everything on all of the lakes are non conforming as it is. Right. They don't conform to any existing shoreland that we have, and everything is. Yeah, so that's that's one of the things that we all were researching when we were doing this. We looked at these parcel by parcel by parcel to find out what we had and how many, all of those are non-conforming lots. <laughs> so that's good. 60. Huh? 50%? Uh, 50 to 60 percent. When we counted all, when we counted uh, uh, number 10 and um, all the lakes up north, <laughs> might be doing the mind blank. But yeah, everything. Lumberton Camp Road, everything is not conforming there. So it's a fascinating uh, problems that we have. Yeah, but these would affect it all going forward. Yeah, huh? And those properties exchange hands. What happens if, if they sell the property, does that go with it? Do they need some other permit? If someone sells the property? Uh, if they can sell it, but if somebody wants to do something with it, right. then they have to get a permit. You can't change them. Or you should that you can't not you can't. It's more to, difficult to change. They would have to go to a conditional use review with the ERB. But they yeah. mow right down to the water's edge, and if they somebody sells a camp and the next person buys it, they can still mow down. That's right. The, right. Right. the grandfathered um, aspect of a property is transferable. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Although we are trying, but we're trying to, to oh, right. We're trying to educate people about the value of not. And, and we, to we the made the limit. Mm -hmm. um, our proposal is that in the changes is that right now it's a five year. We're proposing a two year limit. If you don't know within two years, you have to follow the buffer. So now it's five. We want to restrict it down to two. Mm -hmm. That's going to be in our proposal. You think people will vote for it? I don't know. <laughs> we hope you will help everybody to vote sure, for it, yes. It's easy for me to vote for it. I don't know. <laughs> All right, um, let's see. We haven't even talked about signing the bond. 
Uh, do we want to talk about science? No, we don't. <laughs> we're, we're, what can we talk about? I mean, it's, it's there's there. nothing there. People the, the, the state stops at the road. Our proposed goes over the road. Mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. and, and there is a, a little bit of village in there, but from what I've seen, nobody could build anything unless it was on stilts. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not just, in Calus, no. Yeah. It's not up there a little bit. Yeah. How many houses are around there now? I don't think well, there's just Where's one there? in Calus. Where? Where? Yeah, are you a son? There's just no, before no. this house there right now, right? In the in the in between the two roads right there. Yeah. There, there's one house right there. Isn't Karen? Well, Karen, Karen, Karen's in Calus, and everybody else is in East Mount. <coughs> right there is another. House. Yeah, I don't see anything else constructed inside the. Not in Calus. No. I I don't think. I mean, the most important part was the village area here mm -hmm. in the Adam area. Mm -hmm. um, well, any other um, issues? I, I think I heard several things, and we have about some work to do in terms of we'll change. What we will do is uh, look at how we want to do the village district, and we would come back and ask and meet with you to, if, if this um, meets with what you would like proposed that we would then put in our regulations. Uh, uh, we cannot change the village district center uh, until 2021, hmm. um, but we would could obviously put it on the burner that this is there might be changes that we want to make with the designated village center. Who does that? The state or CBFC? We have to do it through the Central Vermont Regional okay. Planning, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, is there anything else? That did, you did all the landowners around that would be affected, did they get notification? Uh, I think so. Melanie gave me I just got some old email addresses <laughs> for the pardons and for Ruth, and, but we haven't talked to them yet. Um, and I mean, we do, I think everybody posted on our porch forum. The, the notice and stuff, so we try to really make sure people know what's going on. And we can always leave this information at the co-op for other people to, to, uh, to uh, yeah. uh, you know, read and figure out so that it, we'll leave some copies at the co-op. Okay. So you don't, you well, said in the beginning, you don't have any yeah, idea on, on here. Of course, I'm thinking oh, process as I always do. No, know. we don't. We don't. I'm not, I'm not going that route now. I mean, okay. We're not ready because Frank and Frank. everything new comes in and we got to do a right. more. Yeah, I'd rather you guys take your time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. this will be happen. cooking for a while. So, yeah. and also we can take comments by email or phone. Or right. You, yeah. A lot of you got my yeah. email and, and you know Melanie's email. Gary's got a great email. <laughs> we all have email. And we Except take Gary comments as you, as, as you think of things. Only you. No, not only me. <laughs> Um, and I, is there anything else that anybody has on their agenda? Have we covered all of your issues? That would be my question. Sounds like some, some varying ideas for how far up or down the village should go along the road, but. Um, yeah, the road issue is going to be the, that's, that's a big area areas of what we do with the road in this area. I, I think that's going to be in that quick poll to see where people want to see this line drawn. Yeah, okay. We're gonna we're gonna end up preparing a map for review when we start doing these public hearings. Right. So, so Barbara this, said this at the gate, group. that's probably the northernmost point that people suggested. Others said somewhere in the middle the of the gate. There's, there's a property line. Um, Any thoughts? There's so that land. I like the idea so where the where the it comes curves around where the, the down there. Yeah, just below the wetland. Yes, you can't do really very much with that long, skinny wetland area. Right no, now. So if you no, it, it, really it, wet. Yeah. It's like it's this doesn't even show the buffer. By the time you add a 50-foot mm -hmm. buffer, there's nothing yeah, there's right. in there. Right. Right. So, so maybe so this, this does have potential here. Yeah. And if so potential right. is something that, that you, what you're looking at, maybe drawing the line at the gate makes mm -hmm. the most sense. Yeah, somebody's mentioned a gate. That's yeah. part of it. That hardly seems like the village to me. Yeah. It hardly seems like the village to me, and it's separated by that wetland. So, so I know what you're saying, but what, what, what the village is is a place where they want to see dense of Yeah. And yeah. so, 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 do you want it here? Yeah, let's go here. Yeah, yeah. 
Yes, because yeah. up, oh, okay. so up higher doesn't make any sense because it's separated by the wetland. Any, anybody who wants in here, would you raise your hand so I can see you? Okay. Now you weren't down here. And the, the, the other place that we've been talking about is up at the gate. Who, who would like to see it? Who would prefer it at the gate? Can okay. you say what you're asking? Cool. Yeah. The, 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 uh, the, the, the boundary for the village district. We're, we're identifying this is one potential and the gate is one potential. <laughs> now it's like, and I'd like to learn between. <laughs> You're going to have to articulate that a little better. <laughs> Just past the wetlands. Just past the wetlands. Okay. Like, so, yeah. Right. So, yeah. How many would want it? How many are agreeable at the, at the top of the wetland? One. Uh, how many at the bottom of the wetland? Four. Five. Five. And how many up at the gate? Oh, I thought One, that's what you two, asked. Three. At the gate. Okay. Uh, I think cool. the five what people at the bottom sure. have one. Right. Well, <laughs> we're right. Right. Yeah. yeah, I, I thought you said the gate. We should have everybody so stand up and just sit down. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, All right so, so the, the other question, the other question that if, if, you, if you bear with me for a, another minute, the other question that we talked about at length, and we had one person who was articulate on one end of the spectrum and one person who was articulate on the other end of the spectrum, and I'd really like to know where everybody else stands, and that's this purple area in here, whether that should remain protected by buffer or whether that should drop out at the road. So is, can I get some other people weighing in on, on those two options? Okay, so who, how, how many want it dropped at the road? Uh, we're going to get to that. Oh, okay. Please. All right. I, is, I, I'd like to, I just would like to hear some more opinions. We have, we have one on one side and one on the other side, and there's a lot of gray area in between, let, so. Let me say that it's not gonna be much of a problem for the water if you take away that protection, because the water is flowing. Yeah, yeah. The water, because of the way the water flows, that protection is not gonna be any use. You see what I mean? Oh, yeah, we've got the same thing at, at the bottom of number 10, and we've got it at the dam at Curtis. Let me say that that is probably the, most, the one most divisive <laughs> discussion that we have had between our otherwise beautifully harmonious <laughs> planning commission is that exact question. And that's the reason I want to hear from you, you all without me polluting the water with my own opinion. So as it were. So we have, we have this purple section. How should it go? But Gary, the point of it is to protect the water, right? Isn't that the point? The, the point, the, the, do, the, the balance that we're trying to find the right point in between is, is development, uh, the traditional development within village, traditional development patterns, which suggest that we should allow and encourage development within village districts. Or the other side of the, the coin is our concern about uh, water quality and runoff and uh, residential impact on the uh, integrity of our lakes and streams. So that, okay, that's so the, the, the that wasn't the question that was asked. The question that was asked, or the point that was made, was that because of the direction that the water flows, it doesn't impact the water very much to remove doesn't the protection. It doesn't impact this water, but it sure impacts that water. Yeah. Right. I agree. I, you know, I worry what happens if the piece of school is sold and someone comes inside, so I'm going to take the garden hall out and right. put up, like, I don't know, a condominium with eight units. I mean, I would. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I, I, I prefer. Have that, well, it would be within the. The uh, village, the the village center would be allowed. No, it would be allowed. Not, no, the village, uh, village district. In the village district, that would be allowed. And so mm -hmm. I'd be mm -hmm. more apt to want to keep that purple on the other side of the road to you know, prevent that from happening. Okay, that's, there's a, that's a good opinion. Sorry. Anyone else? Now that affects your land. You're the only one here who's, who that actually affects, isn't it? Uh, I go <clears throat> just a touch. Well, not even, not even, it's more than church property. I go, my property goes right up to it. I would like to speak to this, this specter of making condominiums. We do have zoning regulations where a, a project like that would go before uh, the 
the DRB and be scrutinized in many ways. So it's not it's not that somebody can just come in and put it in the condominium. That's that's kind right. of one of those scary things. Wouldn't that right. also fall under Act 250 somehow? That kind of development? Yeah, only if it's ten units. Only if it's ten units or more. It would also certainly have to have a, a approved septic for the greater use. Yeah, that would be yeah. almost impossible. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, they could take Barney Hall and just and put it. another story in it, or you know, break it up into whatever. They don't want that. I get, I'll just yeah. make one more point. It seems to me that those are legitimate concerns. Mm -hmm. Addressing them through shoreland uh, protection is the wrong wrong tool for addressing that concern. And I think Barbara's yeah. probably right that the way that that gets addressed is through mm -hmm. other zoning functions, not by, you know, now maybe the shoreland protection should be extended that way to protect the water, but that's not the right way to protect against a condominium development going right. Well, I wouldn't think it would be the only way to protect against someone coming in and carving up something and wanting to build, but it would certainly add to the protection of mm -hmm. that property. Okay. Well, the shoreland <coughs> overlay was to protect the shoreland okay. and the habitat. I mean, that was the purpose of the shoreland overlay. and where it is, whether it goes beyond the road or not, is the kind of a, you know, the crucial debate. Okay. I think we should go to the road. Any other it any was, other opinions? You said what? Just to the road. Stop at the road? Yeah. Well, we're gonna get to a vote in just a minute. Right, right. now I just want to fully <laughs> expand on everybody. Everybody's got something turning inside and I want to bring that out for all of us to hear. So anybody else? Well, just as a point, if you extend it across the road, then you've basically um, extremely complicated anything that goes on in the village center because you've got one section that is and one section that isn't. Just a point of reference. I think we're ready for a vote. Are we ready for a vote? All right. Who would like to see it the way it's mapped right here? Who would like to see that the way it's mapped this way, with the protections coming out on this side of the road? I know you're going to vote for it. Get your hand up. That goes, I, I, that goes to I the road. Oh, I beg your pardon. I'm just afraid that, that that's going up to the road. No, this is the, the road is here, so this is extending across oh. the road. So we're voting now on shoreline protection extending the full 250 right. feet beyond correct. the road. That's right. correct. That's yes. that one spot. Okay, hands again. One, two, three. Four? four. I see four. Okay, okay and, and curtailing it at the road. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, great. Thank you so much. <laughs> Are we only going to get one person to show up? <laughs> so it's really great that so many 